It's not just what the supermarket does to your produce, it's what we are actually doing as well. Take a look at this. We weren't sure what we'd find when we walked into the supermarket. We set up our hidden cameras in the fruit and vegetable area first. To capture what people might do, they can make all of us sick. And it didn't take long. The customers in this market touched the fruit and vegetables constantly, picking through everything until they found what they liked. Tomatoes, peppers, lettuce, nearly every fruit and vegetable was handled many times by many people. And it didn't end there. People touched their hair, their lips, and then they touched the produce. And what one customer doesn't choose, the next person picks over. The most stunning moment all day, when one woman climbed on top of the plantains, her feet touching the fruit to make her selection. When we switched to the fresh bread area, many people did the right thing and used the tongs to handle the bread. But many did not, reaching into the bins with their bare hands to pick and choose their rolls. This woman lifted the door with the tongs hanging from it and used her bare hands to get her bread. But disturbingly, what happened most often, people actually licked their fingers to open their plastic bag and then used this hand to make the perfect choice. After six hours in the supermarket, we found that some shoppers do the right thing but a surprising majority do not. It's disturbing, isn't it? Produce is the only aisle where you can squeeze and caress the fresh food. What do you think, Sheila? I am alarmed. So <laughs> let me just walk you through how many people touch your food before you get it. Do you have any idea, by the way? I'm flabbergasted now, but I can imagine hundreds. <laughs> let me walk you through it. So the first thing is it gets picked by hand. Right? Okay. And the second thing is it's sorted by hand. Mm -hmm. Then it's thrown on a truck by hand, usually. Then it's taken off the truck at a packing facility. Then you pick through the, the product with sorters, do that by hand as well. Then you box it by hand. Then you unbox it at the supermarket again. Then it's touched by the consumers that you just saw. And then finally, about 20 people, by the time it's all said and done, will have touched your food by the time you get your hands on it. Lovely. <laughs> <laughs> So, any thoughts about what might be a health risk of the produce aisle? <laughs> <laughs> Everything. <laughs> what do you do to prevent? Well, before we get to prevention, because I'm going to do that with you in a second, why don't we throw what you think about the, the produce aisle, concerns you have? Well, you know, again, uh, the, the, the farmers and the people that are, that are behind the, this beautiful product that you see here, they are taking a lot of care nowadays. We're working a lot with the uh, producers of these products to keep them safe. But still, they get a lot of handling. And we cannot absolutely prevent the pathogens that are on the farm, in the birds, in the water, in the animals that may be there, from getting on a lot of these crops. But right now, we can't absolutely guarantee you that, that foods, as nice as they look like this, are not contaminated. So, so here's the big story, and I spent a lot of time thinking about this, Sheila. We need to take these products and still eat them because they're good for us. But we need to be able to wash them. And when I mean wash them, I'm talking about washing them and drying them and being attentive. And let me show you why. You can, if you can don these gloves again. We actually took these two melons. One's a melon, one's a cantaloupe. And we put a little bit of a product on there that actually glows in the dark. Mm. And this glow-dark treatment is going to allow us to see how cutting it with a knife can sometimes spread bacteria from the outside into the inside. So, you, you wanna help me? Sure. So a lot of people think, hey, it's thick rind, what's the big deal? If I cut through it, I'm only eating what's on the inside. So, if you, if you could, get ready with this. Mm-hmm. You get to be the assistant. Very good. Turn the lights down. Okay. Just shine, hey. the, light. So shine the light right there. Uh, we'll do both of both these. Sides. Yeah. So, can you see that? Can you see how it spread through? on both sides. So the knife carried the bacteria through the rind and into the melon itself. So then this is what we see all the time now, which is one of the reasons that I wanna focus all of us on simple action steps we can take to avoid some of the risks. If someone's met, you know, figuring out which of the cantaloupes they wanna buy before you. Very good. Especially if there are 20 of them. Okay, Sheila? Very good. We got it, Roy? Yes, sir. So here's the deal. When we come back, I'm gonna reveal the five things, and they're big ones, that you can use to protect your family at the supermarket. Stay with us.
coming up. So if you notice your bread, your milk, or your meats are going bad faster than you might have thought they would. It's possible your supermarket's to blame. Wait till you find out why. And this may change how you grocery shop forever. One of the things they most commonly find at the bottom of those bins is <laughs> Five ways you can stay safe at the supermarket. We can't delegate this to anybody else. We gotta do it ourselves. Welcome back. Now, before the break, we talked about supermarket secrets that could be making your family sick. So now I'm revealing the top five things you can do to protect yourself. All right, let's get started. First, you gotta protect yourself from dangers in the supermarket by knowing the difference between the sell-by and the use-by date. So take a look at this. So normally, if you look on the side of a package, you'll have a use-by date. These are absolutely essential. They're federally mandated. Food processors have to abide by them, right? You can't go past the use-by date and still sell the product. But the sell-by dates are set at the supermarket's discretion, and they can be changed at will. Now, it's not dangerous, but it's not ethical either. So if you notice your bread, your milk, or your meats are going bad faster than you might have thought they would, that might be a problem at your local store. So check that data. All right, second thing you gotta do to protect yourself from the dangers of the supermarket is to check the temperature. Insist on seeing proof that your supermarket is diligent about the way they store the food. Cold food has to be cold, hot food has to be hot. So look for the thermometer in there and basic rules of thumb is that you want to have the cold food stored at 41 degrees or less. And the reason for that is because salmonella, which is the organism that's trying to protect you against, won't grow below 42 degrees. Make sense? And if it's hot, it's gotta be above 135 degrees. And again, you'll have a thermometer there you can look at. Why the 135 degrees? They're protecting you against spore-form organisms that can grow at pretty hardy temperatures, so you wanna make sure that you're safe. The third way to stay safe in the supermarket is to be smart about the way you gather and pack your groceries. So for example, you're out there shopping and you want to get, again, buy your meat, you know, fish and, and chicken and the like last because you want it to stay cold as possible. But you also want to bag it carefully. And the reason for that is if you have a little bit of juice, and you know this one, by the way, has a little bit that spilled out, that's where the bacteria leak out. And so if you double bag the meat and other types of protein, animal proteins you might be buying, you'll protect yourself from spilling these bacteria laden juices onto the rest of your food that was otherwise relatively clean. Sheila, does it make sense to you? Okay. Do you normally do this? Yes. You do? Yes. Oh good. How many of you do that? How many of you bag your meats? I like that. Perfect. Now, the fourth way to protect yourself from dangers at the supermarket is to use reusable bags but to keep them clean. So the, uh, the nylon bags and the cloth bags can be washed and you ought to wash them if they get dirty, or if not, every 10 uses or so, pretty easy to do. Uh, if they're plastic bags, just wipe them down with a, a little cloth wipe. Uh, use a little bit of vinegar, for example, or something that's acidic and might be able to kill some bacteria. Simple, easy thing to do, so it allows you to help the environment, but help yourself as well. The fifth way to stay safe at the supermarket is to avoid buying anything in a bin. And if you look at the people reaching into the bread bin, you'll see why so many uh, could be contaminating the bread, because they're not using those little tongs. Doug, you've done a fair amount of research in this area and startled me with an amazing bit of insight about one of the most common findings that you have. The leading supermarkets are moving away from con this kind of contact, as you see in the video, and one of the things they most commonly find at the bottom of those bins is false fingernails. <laughs> like these. So, and there's not much you can do about this. So it makes sense that a lot of large chains are moving away from these open bins. So next time you walk by one of these, look for the alternative options that are out there, prepackaged goods. Listen, I gave you five tips that I think can be very helpful. At the end of the day, we can't delegate this to anybody else. We gotta do it ourselves. They're all actionable, they're easy to do. Uh, please share them with the people in your life because if we do it together, we'll drive quality through the supermarkets. You on board? Yeah. All right, we'll be right back.